Sometimes gluten-free baking can get you all in a twist. But today, that's a good thing because we're making some easy gluten-free soft pretzels. I'm Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. So please consider hitting subscribe and let me show you how I made these. Here's the recipe we're making today for these easy gluten-free soft pretzels. It comes from the Loopy Whisk and the website always has really good information on it. It always has really well thought out recipes with great instructions, substitutions, weight and volume measurements. I really like the recipes on the site, so I'm excited to try one of them finally. So it is two pages front and back. Don't let that intimidate you at this point. I've not made this recipe and I've read it over and the directions are pretty straightforward. No rise time, we're using instant yeast. I really think this is gonna be a good recipe. So enough of me talking it up. Let's get started and see if I can actually do it. It's time to start our pretzels and I do wanna say I am having this recipe. So it's only gonna make six pretzels. The full recipe will make 12. The post does say that this is a good recipe to cut in half. And I am measuring everything by weight so that makes it super simple on my end. I will link below to any ingredients you may not be able to find near you. And a list of the ingredients will be in the description along with a link to the full recipe. I've got some warm water here. It's about 120 grams. So it's somewhere around, you know, two thirds of a cup or so just in there. I'm gonna add some instant yeast. It does say you can use instant yeast and the recipe tells you how much right in there. I'm using five grams of instant yeast. To that, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon and a half of light brown sugar. Whisk everything together with a fork. Now I'm gonna put this off to the side for five or 10 minutes while it proofs and we'll keep moving forward. The next thing we need to do is we need to whisk some psyllium husk powder into some water and make a gel. This is one thing that Kat does at the Loopy Whisk that most recipes I don't see. So I really like this idea of prehydrating our psyllium husk powder in the water. So I've warmed up my water for about 30 seconds in the microwave. I'm gonna add my psyllium husk powder and it should form a gel in about 30 to 45 seconds according to the recipe. Now, she does use a whole psyllium husk. I'm using powder, but the amounts are in the recipe on what you should do if you're using the powder like I am. Let's put this off to the side and we'll get our flour started. So we are gonna use the stand mixer with this recipe because it does say you get better mix out of it. We are gonna use our dough hook, which I don't use very often, so it's gonna give me some use out of this. So to our stand mixer bowl, we wanna add tapioca starch, millet flour, sorghum flour, and I will link to those ingredients below because you may not be able to find them near you. A little bit more brown sugar, xanthan gum, and some salt. Let's give everything a good mix with the whisk. Break up the brown sugar. It's going to blend everything together so we're ready to add our wet ingredients. Everything's been whisked. I've got a well in the center of my ingredients to just to start the wet ingredients in. So let's add those to it. Let's add my proofed yeast. Our psyllium has made a gel. Not the most attractive stuff. So let's scrape that in there. Now let's get our dough hook on. And we're gonna knead this until it's smooth. It does not say how long it's gonna take, so I'll keep an eye on the timer for that. And it does say to scrape the sides and the bottom with a spatula, so we will do that as well. The final dough is gonna be soft and sticky to the touch, but we can actually roll this dough out into ropes, which I'm super excited about. So let's get this mixed up. So 
So it's been two minutes and I think it's time we scrape the bowl because I've got some dry flour back here in the back, but it smells like bread guys, which I love. So let's scrape the bowl. So we wanna make sure everything's incorporated. There's also quite a bit on the bottom. And it looks like it's mostly that tapioca starch, so that's not surprising. Tapioca starch can be a little difficult to work with because of it's a starch, more so than like the millet flour and the sorghum. Okay, I'm gonna lower this back. I'm gonna do another two minutes and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, another two minutes has passed and Let's look at this and see. There's still a little bit of starch not blended in. I did blend this on low, so like it was number two on my mixer for about the first two minutes. Then I bumped it up to four just because most everything had mixed in and I wasn't gonna have flour all over the place. So let's see. It is soft, it is sticky like the directions say. Well, that's what it looks like. But it's pretty much in one mass, which is nice. So I think I'm gonna go one more minute and then we will move to the next step. Here's our dough, batter, whatever you wanna call it. It's pretty sticky and pretty soft. It's not really come together yet. Hopefully it does because it looks like it does when I'm looking at the blog post. So hopefully that comes together for us. It does say that we are gonna shape these on a lightly floured surface. So I'm gonna use more of the millet flour to do that. I am gonna put it on the mat as well just because I think it's gonna be easier for me. And I need about 18 inches for the ropes so we can shape them. So it's right on the mat so I can see it clearly. So let's get these shaped. Okay, our, our dough is turned out onto the board. And one thing I wanna note is I do have a little bit of starch still that has not gone into the dough. So make sure you are whisking everything together thoroughly. One thing you may want to do is add your sorghum and your millet flour to the bowl first because it's that starch that wanted to stick on the bottom. So if you're adding that first, it's a little more abrasive and hopefully will keep the starch from sticking to the bottom of the bowl because I scraped the bowl and I still have some pockets of it. So that may affect our recipe just a little bit. We'll see. The other thing is we want to turn our oven on at this point because we need to preheat it to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to do that. And I also lined a baking sheet with a piece of parchment paper. So we're gonna cook our pretzels on that. I'm gonna give the dough a gentle knead. So I think I'm gonna put a little bit of flour over the top just so I can hopefully not stick to it. And I'm gonna knead it gently just for a second to bring it together. And then I need to divide it into six equal pieces and they're gonna weigh about 112 grams a piece. I am gonna do this by weight. So they're all the same size. Here's my dough. It actually came together really nicely. I am sticking a little bit, but not much. Really like that. So let's get it separated out into six pieces. All right, so I've got my six pieces. I had a couple of them that were a little shy. When I got towards the end, there was about 200 grams left. So two of them are gonna be about a 100 grams each, so I'll just roll those a little shorter. So now we need to roll this out into 18 inch strands. So let's see how this goes. You're gonna have to be a little gentle with it, but it does say it will roll. So let's just try it one-handed. For one, you guys will be able to see better. And for two, I think I'll be a little more gentle if I do it that way. Just go back and forth and take your time. You can probably stretch it a little bit as well with both hands and kind of pull it out. I 
Guys, I'm going really, really lightly on this. I'm not pushing down hardly at all, just enough to give it a little bit of pressure. Okay, this is about 18 inches where we want it. Now comes the fun part. I'm gonna attempt to make a pretzel shape. So let's see if I can actually do it. All right, so to shape these pretzels, Kat has done a great visual on her website with step-by-step. -step. So that's what I'm gonna follow. So we had our snake. Now we wanna shape it in the shape of a U. Next, we need to cross the rope. So I've got it crossed over and let's see, we can probably do a little bit more because we want enough to twist, of course. So now I'm gonna twist this piece under this piece. So there is my twist. And finally, I need to flip it over for our shape. So I'm gonna flip it over like this. And then press it together. So there is my feeble attempt at a pretzel shape. This is gonna take practice on your end if you do it, and of course on my end as I do it now. So let's see between the first and the last if they actually look any better. I do have my pretzel holes here. It does say if you go shorter, you'll have fatter pretzels because there's not as much to shape with, of course. So I'm gonna transfer this over to the parchment lined pan and do the other five. Here are my pretzels. As you can see, a few of them are a train wreck. These three seem to be behaving themselves. It's definitely something that's gonna take practice. You're gonna to need to learn your technique for rolling and stretching them out because it's still not a dough with gluten. So it is not going to be nearly as forgiving as um, a regular gluten-free or a regular pretzel would be. You're still need to figure out your rolling technique because there's no gluten in these, so it is more fragile than a regular dough would be. So I think for a first attempt, I'm not doing too bad. Now we have to boil them because that's gonna help give us those shiny brown exteriors that we wanna see. So let's move over to the stove because we need to dip these in a water bath with some baking soda to start that. So my oven's preheated. I'm just waiting for these to be dipped and then we'll get them baked off. So we're over at the stove and I've got five cups of water in here coming up to a very fast simmer. We don't want a rolling boil, but we want it pretty close to a boil. This is all about ratios. So Kat uses about one tablespoon of baking soda per cup of water. So I'm actually using the full amounts that the recipe says for the water and baking soda bath because I still need to boil six of them. So I'm gonna add my baking soda, give everything a good whisk. I'm gonna let this come up to a simmer like it needs to be. And then we're gonna drop these in and pre-cook them before we get them baked off. All right, so it looks like I'm simmering pretty good. So let's get these boiled. I do have it down to about medium high now that everything's bubbling really well because I, I don't want it to foam over on me if I can help it. So I'm gonna lower one of these pretzels down into the water and you wanna cook it for about 20 to 30 seconds. And once it's in there, we may gently push it down to submerge it totally. All right, so that's all it takes. Of course, my shape isn't perfect, but first time on a recipe, that's expected. Let's do the other five. Okay, last one is coming out of the pot now. 
Let's move over and get some salt on these. Here are the pretzels. They've been boiled. This one was the first one I rolled out and by far it is the best one of the pretzels. The rest of them are okay. This one's a little sad, but I think taste-wise I'm more concerned with as opposed to my first attempt. So now we want to take one beaten egg and I'm going to lightly brush each one with the egg to help with some shine and allow our salt to stick. So just lightly brush the entire surface. And then I'm just using kosher salt, guys. That's what I have. If you have pretzel salt, you could use that. If you have flaky salt, use that. A little bit of salt, and then let's finish them off so we can bake them. Okay, everything is egg washed and salted. We need to bake these. We want them to be dark brown with some crackling on the top. They should be puffy. They are gonna bake for 12 to 14 minutes. You're gonna leave them on the pan when they come out for about five minutes and then transfer them to a wire rack. In that time, I'm gonna try to clean up the baking soda all over my stove and clean off my counter so I can show you what these look like. So it's time to try these pretzels out. They have cooled. I did some photos for you guys. Look how golden they are. That's that baking soda bath that's really helped with that. So with what I did on the salt, there's not a whole lot of salt on the top. Tara's probably okay with that. She's not always a salt person. I'm the salt person. I think it'll be all right though. So all six came out great. The one that looks the best, of course, was the first one I did. Everything else is hit or miss. But for a first attempt, I think this is great. Uh, especially being gluten-free and having to roll it and all of that. So let's look at the inside. Very soft pretzel looking. Tears like a soft pretzel. Tastes like a soft pretzel. So there's another inside look, look at it. I did bake these for the full 14 minutes. They looked fine at 12, but I figured they didn't look overcooked. So I did do them for the full 12, or excuse me, the full 14. They almost feel a little wet on the inside, but they taste like they're cooked through. I cooled them on the pan for five minutes, cooled them the rest of the time on a baking rack. They really have a good texture. Storage wise, you wanna keep it in an airtight container. The recipe says they are best eaten the day they're made. If not, definitely do them uh, in an airtight container until the next day. My thought would be if you're not gonna eat them today, freeze them, you know, wrap them up in plastic wrap, maybe some foil after that, pop them in the freezer, and then take them out when you're ready to have one. And if you wrap it in plastic wrap as well as foil, then I would take it out put it on that foil and pop it in the oven to thaw and warm it back through. Then I think you're probably gonna get pretty close to what you have day one. Good recipe. I only made half of it. Definitely the way to do it. If you make the recipe having it and it really comes out well, then do the 12 pretzels next time if you need to or leave it at the six if you don't. Any of the ingredients that you can't find at your store, I will link down below. Sorghum flour and millet flour are not always at the grocery stores I go to. Some have them, some don't. Super easy to find online. Bob's Red Mill is the, the brand that I have right now that I'm using, so it's the brand that comes to mind the most. But I will definitely link below to some options for those. Xanthan gum you probably have. Tapioca starch you probably have but I'll list those down below as well. Ingredients are listed in the description. Full instructions are at the website, which I will link to below. 
This was my first time making gluten-free soft pretzels. They were super easy. Very impressed by that. I think I'm gonna be making them again. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.